you you are the first person yes. to start, so uh, I think I should make you presenter then. <coughs> yes, please. Can you can you share the? I have two computers online because so it's not the yeah. one who's talking. It's it's the other one that will share the screen. Now I have made you. Um, I've made you something. I think. Okay. At the moment, I can make presenter. I can. Ah, yes. Okay. Yeah, and then you can share, and you can share either an application or an entire screen. Yes, perfect. And you could just uh, share your second screen then. Great. So just I will open the cam to give a few words about my. Yeah, it would also be nice to see you. Yeah. Talking. Here I am. Yeah, great. Hello. Hi. How are and, you? And uh, remember, uh, we have to. Uh, well, the idea is that you show some kind of pattern yeah. in the thing you studied, and then you explain what you changed, what your your plan was, and then how you did it and what came out. Great. Yeah. And don't jump to the code right away. Let's understand the pattern first. Okay, so go ahead, please, uh, Julian. Yeah. So um, hi, I'm. Uh, my name is Julian Carbonet, and I am working uh, in a PhD uh, in urban science. I'm using uh, this this voting model from the NetLogo library in order to experiment the decision making in a population. And so, yeah, that was the that was here uh, the first um, the, the the original uh, voting model from the NetLogo library that we saw the other time, and um, so basically this model has been developed uh, to um, to observe how the opinion in between uh, two categories of of uh, of people is spreading uh, in a, in a, in a population so for example the most easy example was to be for or against a decision and so now we have changed the interface that's the new interface and you can see that we have uh, different possibilities so we can run the initial model with the setup here and uh, we can see that so you have the number of patches there and when you run the model just for recall yeah you you have this uh, patterns that emerge uh, so it's the structure of the vote distribution it's always different because each time you run the model you run it by random uh, random initial states yeah and so the opinion uh, structure and distribution is always different uh, in this model sorry just for recall you need to know that each cell uh, is taking a decision depending on uh, the surrounding uh, neighbors so for example to make it more clear this is something that we haven't seen last time you can change the size of the population and the size of patches so here I will make it three times bigger and so you see it's more easily uh, visible so each each square here is called a patch it's surrounded by nine patches it's a Moore's distribution and then it will take for example if we take this one inspect so this one will take a decision based on uh, the majority of colors around so necessarily he will turn he will turn green this time Tack. and so we see he has disappeared it he, he turned he turned green so that's something um, and what we wanted to check the first feature we added is to change the initial number of green so to create an imbalance in in the original uh, original uh, yeah distribution, let's get back to the usual uh, population size. Okay, puff. Oops, sorry. Huh. Here it is. Setup. Okay, and so we will change the number of green. For example, with something that will be three green for one blue. Puff. And it's before running it, oh, you have already run it. What was your expectation? I haven't run it yet. Uh, oh, okay. Well, I think that 
we still we will have some um, remaining blue uh, structures but still it's a bit tricky because there is probably one uh, one scale where if you have too much green at the beginning so the whole screen will turn green the the whole green will will uh, will beat all the blue so we will try to find probably what is the what are the the steps i mean the the yeah the uh the points where uh a certain level of imbalance will uh, will will beat the um, the minority position. So the tipping point, actually. Yes, thank you. I missed some vocabulary. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, typically, what we have seen here is it, there is only a very very teeny uh, cluster of blue that survive, but the whole screen have turned have turned green while we started with 25% of blue. So you see... But you should do it a couple of times, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. This is just one shot at it. This time, no more blue. Yeah. yeah. This time... By the uh, way, if other people want to comment, I think it's n it's okay to have a sort of discussion already, right? Yeah, sure, or do you no, want worries. To finish no worries. Until... Because I'm already interrupting you all the time. Yeah, yeah, you can, you can do it. But... Uh, yeah, so here we see another little blue spot left. Yeah, we have two blue... Well, no, it's the same one. It's the yeah, same. It's exactly yeah. the same one. It's the donut. So we can see that, yes, uh, with 25% of blue at the beginning, when we run this this uh, neighboring uh, rule, uh, almost all the population turns. Yeah. So maybe what we can do now is to apply this rule, which is called award close calls to loser. What we saw the other time is that when you turn it, so when you have a balanced population and you turn this award close calls to loser, which means that in case of um, equality, no, when you have, when a cell will have five blue and three green as neighbors, it will always turn green, okay? It will always choose the minority position. And so what happened is that it takes kind of a lot of time, it stays unstable for a long time. I will accelerate a bit, but at one point, at one point, you see one, one uh, opinion will become bigger than the other one we can sit on the plot and so it will beat the whole game and so yeah this let's say we have one big cluster of green that is still defending itself but at one point sometimes it comes faster than than other time yeah at one point it will be reduced to a very teeny teeny remaining uh, population that's what's happening. So this was your uh, uh, the the goal you set yourself to find the 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 tipping point to find where something can maintain itself like this. Uh, yeah, my goal was more to uh, look at what happens if in a population the let's say the, the most spread behavior is to systematically take the position of the minority. Uh, mm -hmm. It happens that at the end, uh, the whole screen turns uh, the same color. So okay. somehow, uh, it's not really, it's not, I mean, it's not the fairest rule. Uh, yeah. Yeah, interesting. But you are now still playing the sliders and the settings from the original model, right? Yes, uh, yes, exactly. Or in the original model. That, so that was what, what we do? saw in the original. And when you, yes, when you nice. do the same, when you do the same from an unbalanced uh, population, with this uh, rule uh, to always take the minority position, which which was balancing finally the the original model. Here it seems. Yeah, to have kind of the same result. Uh, so it goes much faster, but it's not really um, balancing uh, the minority position. Uh, it's spread and it 
keeps existing because those small nodes will not disappear. They are in a sort of balance, so they, they will keep existing. So we can see that the minority opinions are a bit spread everywhere. So that was something. And then yeah. we tried we tried to make something different by uh, settling uh, two more opinions. So here you have blue, green, but also red and orange. Sorry, it was... Uh, and so here what happens when we run it, it's not really perfect. First, it goes very fast. And so it turns like we have a lot of opinions spread. So all the opinions kept spread a bit everywhere. But uh, you have a majority of red. So about the majority of red, I will show you later the code. I think it's something that we have to fix. But what, what we can say already is that <clears throat> with four opinion, we cannot observe very clear structures of, of, uh, of distribution. So there are some spots a bit every everywhere and one big majority, one big uh, yeah, color. Uh, this is something that can be influenced somehow with this one, the same rule. So yeah, when, when you choose to um, assign them to take the, the minority position, it always, it turns blue. Uh, we have more blue structures. And there is something to understand is that the red and the blue, if we go in the code, the red and the blue are the two, um, let's say, central positions. So there is a sort of normal distribution of, of, uh, of my number. Since this model is based on uh, sums of values, when each pine patch is assigned a value, so there is a sort of normal distribution of the, of the mean. And so uh, the normal distribution um, tends to assign uh, the mean as, as the majority. And um, the mean here um, correspond to, to red, red color. I would like to show you the code. This, this is not really perfect. So my point now, I, I will end soon, uh, not to make it too longer. But my, aim, my, my main um, understanding is that this model, the initial one, was called as a numerical model. So we can see colors, but they are not categories. The colors are based on the value of each patch. And the patch can be zero or one. And so when taking a decision, it will calculate the sum of the values of the neighbors. And so when it's more than five, you know that you have a majority of one numbers around. And when it's less than three, you know that you have a majority of zeros around. And when it's between five and three, so you can, you can uh, say, okay, do something, take one decision, change your color or keep your, your previous color. But so when you do it with, uh, with different values, so basically 0, 1, 2, and 3, it makes the calculation more complex. And so you have also certain blind points where you don't know uh, for um, for the the, the 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 sums in in the in the middle, so basically from zero to twenty four, you don't really know if you are thirteen or twelve. You don't know which number, uh, which values are composing this sum, and so this is what makes the model a bit. It's it's not really it's not really let's say uh, valid. I would say. 
So that was something yeah, that, that we understood. If we want to make a better model with more than two class of opinions, we will definitely need to code it differently, not by using a numerical, uh, numerical uh, data type, but uh, something categorical. Uh, yeah, so far we are playing with categorical numbers. Well, we are using numbers as categories because we play on these ordinal, ordinal, ordinal categories like with numbers, which is kind of feasible but it's not perfect. So, do you have any ends, uh, questions? Maybe I can see something in the chat. No, uh, it's not related to me. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Uh, I can't hear you, I'm sorry. Is that me only?